dump it low, make them spin and throw them all up, down, throw it round, oh, yeah. pop it like a pro. Please don't get me started. Please don't. Ah, please don't. Ah. What are your friends? I'm J Max. Welcome back to my channel. This is J Max. We ask today I'm watching a video by BFTV that says BET 106 and Park's most scandalous moments. I will try to give y'all more of an actual opinion in these as well as give y'all my perspective on certain things because <laughs> I saw that comment under um, one of the last videos. So I promise to do better. Let's see what happens in this one. Many of us grew up watching 106 and Park Top 10 Live on the BET Network. It was a 90-minute music countdown show that premiered in September 2000 and ran for 13 more years. It featured interviews, performances, music videos, and competitions in front of a live studio audience. Yep. 106 and Park was a hit in black households and took the number one spot as the highest rated music program in North America with around 600,000 views every episode, beating out its competitor TRL over on MTV. The show jump-started a lot of careers of budding hip-hop and R&B artists who made their television debuts right there. 106 and Park had some of the most most memorable black music moments and interviews <laughs> that are still talked about till this day. Yeah. Here are 106 and Park's Ooh, most scandalous this. moments. In it. Besides the interviews and music videos, people specifically tuned into 106 and Park for the unpredictable live performances. That could include anything from surprise guest appearances, mm -hmm. grand entrances, and embarrassing moments. <laughs> Take for example, B5's debut performance of All I Do. Listen. And I can't wait to get to school each day Ooh. for you to pass my But they weren't the only ones to tank during their first performance yeah. on 106 and Park. In 2006, newcomer Cassie appeared on the show to promote her hit debut single, Me and You. But her awkward performance would end up receiving a storm of criticism and made headlines for her lack of energy and vocal talent. Man. I know that I shouldn't have had you waiting at all. Put your hands together for the princess of this collection. a public statement to okay. MTV that read, she had her first television performance and she had an all right performance. You could hear the nervousness in her voice. And to be honest, I kind of smiled at it because it made me really appreciate what I really love about her. She's a regular person. And we as artists, we sometimes get nervous. I told her it's like riding a bike. You're gonna fall down. You gotta keep on getting up. I'm with her through her development and I have no question on her singing ability. It just made me appreciate that she got nervous and it was kind of cute to me, to be honest. Some people are gonna have good days and bad days. The thing about Bad Boy is, we're with our artists through all days. She's not an artist that has a problem with her vocals or singing. You've got to understand that success for her is coming out of nowhere. It's just so huge and sometimes everybody handles it differently. So I'm quite sure she'll get over it. I don't care how many performances it is. I'm going to be with her until she gets it right. Cass um, before they continue with that, this makes me think or makes me like wonder if this is why he was so hard on like all of his making the band groups because they had to be on point from the beginning until the end. Even when they messed up, he didn't, it wasn't cute to him when they messed up. Um, a lot of bias there, but <laughs> respectfully, I love Cassie when I think about how she performed here versus like what her music eventually evolved to be. I actually did follow her music through what was supposed to be the second album, through her mixtapes, as well as what she did when she finally left Bad Boy. I think she always wanted a laid back swag. She just didn't fall into it until she got older. But yeah, why was it always the Bad Boy artist that fucked up on 106 and Park is another question we got to ask. 
also addressed it on her MySpace page, saying, I'm aware that my live performances have been pretty bad. No excuses. I'm still getting over stage fright. I am very upset with a series of events this week, and I do not appreciate people making me look and sound crazy. I'm a 19-year-old girl. I'm single, and I'm working my ass off. What did they have to do with But one of the most talked about live performances on 106 and Park is Destiny's Child's performance of Soldier, yep. where Michelle took a tumble. Back in November 2004, the group appeared on 106 and Park to promote the new single. Right as the performance begins, Michelle loses her footing and falls to the ground, but immediately stands up and jumps right back into the choreography as the audience looked on in silence. Then she removes her heel and continues the performance. <laughs> <laughs> Not the fact that she felt it's always the sound of her falling that like sends me. We love you, Michelle. This embarrassing incident would be joked about and memed non-stop for yeah. years. She later revealed that the public humiliation caused her so much PTSD that it took her 13 years to rewatch the performance. Oh, man. But now she's able to laugh it off. And I can't talk about memorable 106 and Park performances without mentioning Jenny Wine's over the top performance of Pony as if this was his Super Bowl halftime performance. It first started out with the show's <laughs> host Free and AJ introducing the R&B singer's performance, but they said something had happened to him backstage. And that's when Jenny Wine was wheeled out on the stage on a stretcher to start his performance that was packed with choreography Dramatic. and theatrics. They said he passed out or something. Yo, let's run with him. It pumped his heart and it'll bring him back, yo. <laughs> this is what's missing from music today, though. Theatrics and fuckery. And this thing. <laughs> Freestyle Friday was another popular segment on 106 and Park oh, yes. where aspiring rappers would compete in a freestyle battle. A lot of talent gained exposure from the segment and landed deals outside of the show. The most notable contestant is Blind Fury, who was born with multiple birth defects and is obviously blind. Mm -hmm. He appeared on MTV's Rockefeller MC Battle Live back in 2003 before making his way to 106 and Park, where he became the undefeated rap battle champion. Wait, long time. Representing whackness to the fullest, boy, you stupid. All my music make dogs get ruthless. Dropping the graffiti, you catching exclusives. Drop the deuces, kind of like breezy. It ain't easy to be the boy Fury on TV. I make you wonder, you should have picked the perfect rhyme. Listen, I'm about to show you where the blind joke sits. I promise it's about to feel like a cyclone hits you. You call yourself K9, I'm a beast. Grinding your teeth and your rhyme in this week. You're trying to be G. Keep that neutral. Change the name from K9 to Dog Doodle. Damn. But there were times when the battles got heated and even physical. During an episode taping in 2011, mm. contestants Blessed and Gohard Jetson went head to head in a final round of the battle. But Gohard Jetson started intimidating reigning champ Blessed during his turn and Roxy tried to intervene. He eventually slaps his hat off his head and this escalated into a physical altercation with Blessed throwing his mic at Jetson, yeah, then mean... picking him up and slamming him to the ground. Damn. Security managed to break up the fight and ejects Jetson from the studio. Roxy and hmm. rapper Game announced after the commercial break that both contestants were disqualified. This was a devastating blow for Blessed, who was two battles away from winning, and he spoke about the situation in an interview with Blue Collar TV. After round one, Duke was mad, you know what I mean? The whole crowd was sure feeling me. I already had the battle in the bag. I was in the zone, you know what I mean? No cocky stuff. When I'm winning, I'm winning, you know what I mean? Just like anybody knows when they win, they win. Right. So, first of all, there's rules to 106 and Park. They give you the rules right before the battle. You know what I mean? It's just common sense. You're not supposed to put your hands on nobody during any battle. Right. During any battle, you're not supposed to touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's a little tap. 
That's supposed to be an automatic disqualification. I wasn't looking for a disqualification. I was looking for the win because I, I already was winning. After round one, everybody said I already won. But, you know, there's two rounds. So after round one, I was, you know, cool, calm, and collective. He had touched me once, and I'm like, for the sake of the show, I'm not going to wild out over it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Roxy, round two starts, and um, he spits a whole bunch of garbage. <laughs> but me, I'm cool, calm, laid back, just waiting for my round to go. So bang, they throw on the um, ambitions of a rider, the pop beat for yo, for those who are familiar with that. They start playing that beat for me. So bang, I start going in round two, round two. I'm killing them. Now, listen to this, y'all. Tell me what am I supposed to do? You be me now. Mm -hmm. but just walk in my shoes. Homeboy, while I'm rhyming, yells in my face. Ah, ah, making all these point being now he's yelling in my face he's coming close to me while i'm rapping and trying to lunge his body on me mm -hmm. like you know what i mean so i stand there smiling at him you know what i mean doing doing what i do he knocks my hat off we from the bronx y'all <laughs> new york city yep. you knock your hat off what are you supposed to do <laughs> Fuck him up. For sake of the show i still don't do nothing right i still don't do nothing i keep rhyming i keep rhyming i was like you know what outside i'll find him out now, tell me what I'm supposed to do after this. Homeboy pushes me to the point where I fall off the stage. Yeah. So I hit him with the boom. But the thing is that when he pushed me, he thought he was gaining points. So he's smiling at game this way. I'm over here. Look, boom. And then he's already getting rushed. <laughs> hit him with the UFC slam. Boom. And then security came. Rushed the scene. Got him up out of there. Took him to the back. And that's why I got to see the footage. I got to see what I did. So the director of the show called me on my phone. You were caging and said, I'm fighting to bring you back on the show. Okay. The other dude is banned forever. Yeah, because you didn't do nothing. Camera, you are. Yeah, now what he was supposed to everybody that was there, talking about from cameramen to security to the director of the show to Roxy actually came to the black like, like, bless baby, you alright, you good? Like, that wasn't your fault, you handled yours. That made me feel good. I was yeah. like, hey, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, <laughs> you know, but my whole thing is they, there's rules to the battle. Why weren't the rules enforced once they seen them provoking me? You understand? Yeah. yeah. I, read, I think the touch, the yelling, the hat slip, I think that was enough for me to get it on. <laughs> Speaking of... Which is true because... Now, Roxy did try to step in. I think maybe she was conscious in that moment. Like, hey, we need to stop this shit. But, like... I don't care where you from. Once you put your hands on me in any capacity, you getting dropped. So I commend him for that, but I also commend him for behind the scenes fighting for him to actually come back to the show. That, that's dope. Battles on 106 and Park. I think most of us remember the Kanye West versus 50 Cent, the Clash of the Titans special on oh, the yeah. show. In September 2007, the two biggest names in hip hop, Kanye West and 50 Cent, were set to release their highly anticipated albums on the same day, leading to a public competition and debate over whose album would sell the most. Both rappers welcomed friendly competition and did interviews expressing their love for one another. And BET decided to cash in on the hype with a special episode where they both performed and did a joint interview. This episode gave 106 and Park their second highest viewership behind their Aaliyah tribute episode. And in the end, Kanye's graduation album debuted at number one with nearly a million copies sold in the first week in the United States alone, while 50's Curtis album debuted at number two, selling nearly 700,000 copies in its first week. To be alive during this time was so funny because like, you didn't get the social media piece of it. It was really like you lived in the moment. So you went home and watched the show and you saw this like this beef in real life. And then like, listen to themselves, like 700,000, a million. These were pure sales, y'all. Like we don't get that as much now. You get it sometimes, not as much. There were times when celebrity guests got spicy with the show's hosts. Still in the studio working on music too? Aren't I always in the studio working on music with everybody guys? So, uh... <laughs> I am on my fifth. You bought it? That. You just say it because you on camera. camera. But some of these times, things got really heated or out of control. The fuck? In 
October 2011, rapper Webby was a guest judge for the Freestyle Friday segment and was also there to promote his new album, Savage Life 3. Everything seemed to be going well and he and Roxy even posed for some pics. But after the commercial break, Webby was nowhere to be found. Oh, and by the end of the show, host Terrence J announced that he was no longer welcome to the show without giving any explanation. Rumors started circling social media about his absence, but according to Webby, it was because Terrence was jealous of his interaction with Roxy. He then did a series of interviews threatening Terrence <laughs> and making disparaging comments about both of the hosts. Not you threatening TV hosts. Shout out to Terrence, baby. BT, I love y'all, baby. I am BT. I am black entertainment, baby. How can you tell me I'm not? I am BT. Look at you looking at BT right now. So Terrence, I'm sorry your b wanted me to put that on up, mate. Get your b mate. Uh, next thing you know, he come on TV. Hey, Webby is banded off TV for BT. <laughs> <laughs> See that dude up, mate. So y'all better keep. Were Terrence and Roxy dating at one point in time? I didn't know that. I, you know, maybe I fell off the wheel with 106 in part, but that's that's new to me if it was. Wait for me, Mike. Who you gonna get up? They already know. Whooping that nigga. Oh. <laughs> he don't know. Hey. Look, he, 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 he like this here. He on the way on the other side of the room. Uh -huh. So you know how they act when they hit. He gonna do like this <laughs> <laughs> here. I know I guess it hurt his heart. You ain't know it. What you told him? What, I, I know you. I know what. I know what he told him at the Get your so <laughs> Roxy went on record to say that Webby was sexually harassing her in between commercial oh, breaks and okay. it made her uncomfortable. She also says his manager called her to apologize. She spoke about the situation with NBC's Peter Bailey in an interview. What exactly happened? It's really sad that it was taken uh, to the extreme. That it, Not to the extreme, excuse me. But it was uh, the way it was looked upon and it's like, oh... You know, you, he was banned, and I think that any light, you have sisters, cousins, aunts, yeah. your mother, well, I love her. you know, I love um, and any light that a woman feels that she was disrespected, mm -hmm. and, and I get, I have thick skin, I don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying, but when you're at your job, and somebody sexually harasses you, mm -hmm. in a manner that is very vulgar and disgusting, you know, I have no shame of sticking up for myself and telling you that you're improper right now. I'm at work, we're in a set, there's children around us, you know, you're, you're really out of line right now. And that's fair. And um, I think that people should more so applaud a woman sticking up for herself and the people around her for sticking up for herself than allowing that kind of behavior to happen. And I think that we allow that behavior to happen too much in our society and we don't put light on people being inappropriate and and it's okay ladies to speak up and say no i don't like to be spoken to in that manner you know and i respect myself and and i respect others and i treated him but that would definitely not be the last time guests got into it with hosts in April 2014, oh up-and-coming R&B singer August Alsina stopped by the show to promote his debut album, Testimony, that dropped that week. Everything was going great until co-host Keisha Shantae asked him if there was any possibility of him and Trey Song squashing their beef and collaborating <laughs> again in the future. For reference, the two singers were friends and had appeared together on the remix of August's song, I Love This. But something happened between the two that led to a falling out. During the press run for the album, August made the announcement of the falling out and was getting a lot of questions about Trey. But when it came to 106 and Park, he told producers the topic was off limits. And he became irate when Keisha asked him about it. You did our New Year's Eve bash. Yeah. You came on the stage, you killed the stage, you brought Trey songs out as your guest. You got, the girls were going crazy. <laughs> the eyes <laughs> closed is killing me. Is there any chance that two talented brothers will bury the hatchet? So you're just gonna go against the grain <laughs> and go against everything that I, I just I just told y'all not to ask me that shit when I got up in here. Okay. Well, I think uh, fair. I think the, the girls want to know. Testimony and you spoke coming into, out, baby. You spoke into radio. <laughs> I'll be my stars. You out 
understand that shit. Like in journalism, if they say don't touch that topic, why would you still touch that topic though? You on the radio, you spoke on radio stations and blogs, and you're on the show. So fans want to know, and I'm just asking you what fans want to know. But he that's asked it. you not to ask that question. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. I won't. All right, we move on. <laughs> there there you are. It shouldn't have been a topic, is what he said though. I'm a Former 106 and Park co-host Roxy Diaz took to Twitter to call him out in a series of tweets that read, let me go on record and say Keisha Shante did her job as a journalist. Any other radio or TV personality or blogger would have asked too. Really? To even applaud how she was responded to is what's wrong with our generation today. Also, that language on 106 and Park is not even necessary. After the backlash, he appeared on Sway in the Morning mm. saying he felt played and was being made to look like the bad guy. I, you know, typically I be on, you know, the side of what we all think is stereotypically or traditionally right. He asked y'all not to bring that shit up. So why would you bring it up? Eventually admitted fault. True journalism and not. Integrity you know, is still a part but, of it. Uh, what you said, you told somebody not to ask you a question. Yeah, I was played, man. Yeah. And it wasn't like, you. It, here's the thing. I look like the bad guy right yeah. now because, yeah. because of how I've been portrayed. Yeah. And <clears throat> really, people don't know and, like, don't play with me. Yeah. And, like, don't lead me to believe something that is not. If you tell me we ain't going to talk about this because I ask you, it's, you, you lied right to my face. Yeah. Mm. So don't blindside me. So, you was mean to that girl. I wasn't. Nah, like, she's not right with that cookie. Honesty and mean mixed up nowadays. I mean, I go through it a lot, so I know where you coming from. And, but you didn't have to curse that out. I, yeah, you can say that now, but if you put me in a position, that's how I felt, and it, which is exactly I went back to BET mm. yesterday. Yesterday, and uh, that's exactly what I said. I mean, she she was like, I I don't um, I didn't mean to disrespect you, and I was like, well, it wasn't my intentions to disrespect you. So there was a convo. Yeah, it was a conversation, okay. but the thing was, uh, you know, before this conversation, I felt how I felt, mm. and I you know, spoke on how I felt, and I don't take back nothing that I said. That so, did you have a conversation with her? You specifically told her not to ask you that? Yeah, my whole my whole squad. But you know what, though? What, what I'm... I, I, now, mm. it's your fault, though. You know this is all your fault. Why Why so? <laughs> because you're the one that went public with your friction with Trey Song. I mean, honest. If you would have never honest. come out and said nothing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> 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 Nobody would have never known. They but never known you know that. what? As I, it's all a part of me, um, me growing. Uh, Viewers of 106 and Park also got to witness hosts having falling outs live on air. During a taping Ooh. in summer 2008, Terrence J repeatedly poked fun at Roxy throughout the episode and even made a comment about her body. Roxy, who brushed off his comments at first, eventually stormed off stage once she had had enough, forcing Terrence to finish the show on his own. But he's when this stage will continue to throw jabs at her what it's not that bad but it's not that good uh we listen have we got a new history making that's my read if you can't tell a new history making no one video you do your read over there and i'm in the, the non i'm in the good zone that's how you feel today yeah i mean i didn't do it you did uh look we got more 106 of park on the way let's get these breath mints right back yeah what's this not stage i feel like i saw something that said it was stage yo why can't you have a body more like Sierra? Yo? The fuck? Did y'all fellas did y'all see us? Yo. Why can't you have a body more like Nelly? <laughs> True story. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Remember, don't miss Nas next week on I do one. Have a body like He'll stop by and discuss his very controversial new album. Next Friday, we're having auditions for Freestyle Friday. Now, for more information. Uh, let me get from the email address. The email address is freestylefriday at gmail.com. Put it on the bottom of the screen. It should be on the bottom. Of the... Yeah, there it goes. Freestylefriday at gmail.com. I just wanted to help you before you messed it up. I had it. I just in case you're gonna mess it up. Freestylefriday, gmail.com. Make sure to hit us up. And you know what you gotta do with that. All the best MCs in the country, you make sure to get at us right now. We're holding audition in New York City. It's gonna be off the hook, all right? Roxy won't be there. She won't mess you up while you're doing your thing. It's like that today, really? You really feel in some type of way. No, I'm just funny. No, I'm just real talk. Yeah, it's good. It's going down. Go Rick Ross, yeah. Nelly, here I am. It's number two on the channel now, baby. Here I go. Let's do this. 
some real big things right there. That video hit. Oh my God. Yo, come up here, yo. I need a co-host or somebody. Hey, come here. You're going to be my new co-host right now. What's your name? Gabrielle. Where are you from? I'm from Hempstead. Hempstead. Give it up for her from Hempstead. Was I too hard on last yeah. I wasn't too hard on her, right? No. No, see, I was just Girl. Right So look, you gonna be, I know, you're gonna be my co host, and some people won't act too sensitive with their jobs, all right? So we're gonna get into the number one video in the world right now. This joint hit number one for the. Nobody really knows what caused the tension between the hosts, but they were rumored to be dating behind the scenes. Okay. Roxy they took some time off from the show, and they eventually moved past the situation and never mentioned it after. I know I'm not hiding under a rock. Somebody did a story or someone answered and said that that was staged so Roxy could take time off. Was that, maybe, okay, maybe I'm- thinking. Aside from all the chaos, there were many somber moments on 106 and Park. From Aaliyah's tribute episode to the mm -hmm. announcement of Michael Jackson's death. Welcome back to the show, it's BT's 106 and Park. According to the LA Times, Michael Jackson has been pronounced dead. We lost two great american icons today hollywood's own starlet farrah fawcett one of the original charlie's angels and now one of the world's most loved and greatest pop stars that we will probably ever know in our whole entire lifetime there are still conflicting reports some of the news sources say he's in a coma so uh -huh. i'm just michael jackson has been confirmed he has passed away guys latoya like it not anymore in the number seven number video, seven video. And AJ and Free's unexpected departure from the show. They were the original hosts and appeared in hundreds of episodes and mm -hmm. BET specials for five years. But by July 2005, their relationships with BET's executives had soured behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Free Marie eventually stopped appearing in episodes that summer, and AJ was left to either host alone or with a celebrity guest. Then on July 28th, AJ tearfully announced that he and Free would not be going forward with the show. <laughs> I, I'm on the phone right now with Free. There's a lot going on over here at 106 and Park. <laughs> I, I got her on the phone to help me from getting emotional. Um, I want everybody to know out there, this is my last live show on 106 and Park. And Aww. Free's gone as well. And uh, uh, man, me and Free wanted you all to know that we love y'all very much. Uh, so sad. I have a video fully breaking down what went on behind the scenes and the fallout, but it was basically due to new management at the show and the executives' refusal to renegotiate their contracts. Fans of the show were left devastated and even started a petition calling for their return. But the two original hosts never came back, and we can all agree that 106 and Park was never the same after Free and AJ's it's resignations. True. The show was still doing good for a few years, but it eventually went downhill in every way possible. Mm -hmm. And this brings me to the moment that led to the show's demise. On an episode in August 2014, guest host Karuchi Tran read a tasteless joke about Beyonce and Jay-Z's daughter Blue Ivy's hypothetical thoughts during MTV's Video Music Awards that took place over the weekend. The top six things Blue Ivy thought about the VMAs with number six. I really did wake up like this because my parents never comb my hair. Oh, uh, uh, I can't. This caused intense backlash towards both BT Damn. and Perucci, who says the producers made her read what was on the teleprompter. She took to Twitter after the show to tweet, Now you all know I love me some Beyonce and Blue Ivy. BET's president of music programming and specials, Stephen Hill, publicly apologized on Twitter and expressed his regret for the show putting Karuchi in that position. Okay. He also said the network privately apologized to Beyonce and Jay-Z. BET suspended the producer who wrote the joke. <laughs> and not too long after, 106 and Park was canceled for good. Dang. What were your most memorable moments of 106 and Park? And also, how would you rank these scandalous moments? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments <laughs> below. Like this video. Subscribe to BFTV for more content. Okay. That was a really, really, really good one. Um, hopefully, I didn't know y'all too much with the stopping and pausing and talking. But definitely, in my opinion, like most of the moments in this video are the ones that I remember. Um, 
I was really on again, off again, 106 in part. As a kid, I did not rush home to watch it, but if it was on, I definitely watched it. <laughs> um, enough to know these moments, and then over the years, as things have become memes, you that you naturally kind of go back and take a look at stuff. But yeah, the Terrence and Roxy situation, I don't know why somewhere in the back of my brain, I remember it coming out that that was staged so she could take time off or it was some kind of like, it was planned. It wasn't necessarily like a real natural fight in the moment, but I could be wrong. Y'all let me know if y'all know anything else about that. But um, yeah, from Michelle Fallon to B5 and Cassie's horrible performances to August Alcina, like these were moments to, to kind of, you know, look back on and live through. Um, I think I did what was it maybe a vma video or it might it might have even been another bt video where i said it would be dope to see these things come back in some type of format but we also know given the way things are now in music and entertainment it probably just wouldn't work so <laughs> yes we miss it this was a great um trek down memory lane nostalgic for sure but yeah let me know your thoughts on it below comment like subscribe until next time peace